Welcome to Moon Cusser Art. Today we're gonna make a gorgeous freeform geode. I love this piece. I made it with the Total Boat resin. It was truly a pleasure to work with this resin. Gave me a fantastic finish and worked well. I have tons of tips and tricks for you along the way, so stay tuned. I am using half inch MDF board and this piece started out as a two by four. I pencil lined my design out and then I bought myself some brand new finishing blades for the old jigsaw. I just kept turning the board so that I wasn't cutting into my piece below and I got a great cut. I brought the wood back into the studio and set it up on my resin table. I'm using Zinzer Bullseye 123. It's a primer for all surfaces and it's water-based. So it really worked well indoors. It had very little odor. I put a total of three coats on both sides and the edges and that will seal everything. I won't worry about moisture. I'll be using Total Boat Resin for the first time on this project, and I'll also have a discount code for you in the description box on the video, so make sure to check that out. Here are some of my products that I've pulled off my shelves. I don't think I'll be using them all, but I like to have them handy, and this is a good way for me to plan out my colors. Everything will be working on a black, white, and gold color scheme and I've got some really nice products here that'll help me get a top-notch project so good to keep them all on hand and plan things out. I'll be using my yogurt cups as stands and I have my blue tape, my painter's tape on the back that to protect the drips and I'm going to use Pebeo CERN Relief. This is a black colored uh, product and it will dry within 60 minutes. I apply a thin line. This tube was a little bit on the old age, so it got a little tough to squeeze out, but I managed. I batched seven and a half ounces of the Total Boat Resin. Again, it's a one-to-one -one mixture, and that's by volume. You can also measure it by weight, but that's a different way of measuring. It measures out very nicely, mixed up really well, and I used Flow Art Resin Pigment. I got that from the Epoxy Resin Store. This is their black, and as you can see, it is really covering that white background wonderfully goes on really nice. So I'm using a smaller cup to apply it at the edges, filling it in using my pop stick just to manipulate it right up to that line that I created with that Pebeo CERN relief. And it works really well holding it back. Give it a quick hit with the torch. And then I'll start dipping my gloved fingertip into that cup and I work that over the edges because I want those edges to be black as well. So I'm getting a really nice application. The resin is on the thick side. It's one of the things that I liked about it. And it just applied really well, had no trouble. It mixed evenly. And then we'll just give it one more quick light torch with the flame from this lighter. And that'll just pop any bubbles at the sides. Now here I'll be using Ranger's Embossing Powder. This is their gold tinsel. And I put it on a popsicle stick and I get right down there near the, this is still soft resin. It's been sitting for about 40 minutes and I just blow it off of that pop stick. So it creates a dusting right on top of that resin layer. And it's, it'll give a really nice sparkling effect. The gold will really pop against that black background. And here's a nice close-up look of exactly how that embossing powder looks sitting on top of the black. So pretty. Okay, we are at the 
part table. And I have one ounce of the Total Boat resin mixed up in the little cup. And I am going to add some Mayron gold powder. This is my little sample swatch of it. And I'm going to be filling these cups with a little bit. And then I'm going to be arranging my crystal points in there. Look, one already volunteered and jumped in. So let's get this mixed up. So let's get a little spoon here. And it's easier said than done. Okay. So now I know that I put one spoon of Mayron to the one ounce of resin. I'll mix that in. And I like to put some 99% alcohol in there that's going to help with popping bubbles. So you guys can see that. Okay, I'm not going to get too crazy about it because again, this is just to get some molds here. I'm just going to put a little bit in each cup just so that it covers the bottom. Probably have way too much here. Okay. And then like, here's a nice big fat one that'll make for a, a great center focal. These are strung beads. So I look for the little hole where the string had been through there because I don't want that to be on the end point. And then I'll just start arranging them however I see fit. And you have to kind of balance it back and that's why, uh, and it's very slippery in these little silicone cups. <laughs> and there it goes, slip sliding right down in there. So like I said, I just kind of prop them against one another, so long as they don't fall down, which they are. They are just sliding all over the place. So uh, let's try. I think it's just because it's just too thin right now. So maybe I'll let it set up and come back. All right, it's an hour and a half later and the resin is sticky and the points are not sliding. So I can arrange them very nicely and get them to stand up against those walls. Now I'm back over at my resin table, putting on my respirator mask. I do like to be good to myself and protect myself from any organic vapors that could be in my environment. And I have six ounces of the Total Boat resin batched up. I have um, a paper cup that I'm going to use for applying. And I'm using the Mayron Gold Powder. I'm gonna, this is going to be my go-to gold. So I batch it up and then I put small amounts into these paper cups. I pinch it. It creates a really nice spout and it gives me a lot of control so that I can put this resin down exactly where I want it. Now again, this resin has an approximate work time of 30 to 45 minutes. I'm working in an environment where my temperature in the room is at 74 degrees today, so it's a bit on the warm side, but that keeps the resin flowing and it gives me a really nice work time. 
I found the resin very easy to control when I mixed it. I didn't find that a lot of bubbles were trapped in the resin. It was easy to remove them once the resin was laid out. So all good things for me. And what do you think of this Mayron gold, guys? This is a really spectacular gold. This um, I got this one from Walmart and they had a really good price running so I got a good deal. Love this stuff. I've used it in the past. And then I have a little bit more left over so I went ahead and created these center focal rings. Just lay those down on the board. You know, it's, it's fun to not have something mapped out and just do what you like to do. I have been working with this gold resin now for about 40 minutes. So my open time on being able to pour is running out. And good thing that I got my stuff ready. I have my, this is glass glitter that I got from Mayers. And it is not cheap. I'm going to be honest with you, I paid dearly for this stuff. It has been about mm, maybe an hour since I stopped pouring the gold. And at this point, the resin isn't going to move anymore on my piece, but it's still soft and very sticky. So I'm using a plastic spoon to scoop up that glass and I'm being very generous with sprinkling it all over that sticky resin. I'm trying to be careful not to get it to the outside rings. And now today, everything's cured and I got my vacuum cleaner out. There's a lot of debris. I've stuck my knee-high stocking down the tube of my vacuum and I'm sucking up this glass because I don't want to waste it. So I'm collecting it and putting it right back in the bag. By doing this, I'm going to save myself some money and have more product for the next project. So there's a little tip for you guys. I did not get any in my outside ring, so I was really happy with that. That would have been a bummer. I put my sock back on there, turn on the vacuum, and go about collecting from the other rings. It worked really well. The Mayer's Glass Glitter is really spectacular stuff. Sharp, so watch out, but very, very pretty. The resin has also cured on these crystal points, so I can pop them out of the mold and we'll get them outside so that we can clean them up and have them ready. Hi guys, I'm outside. Got my mask on. Let's turn the camera around and I'll show you what I'm working on. So I still have a little bit of snow out here. That's my huge pile. <laughs> anyway, so I've got my points out here that I made up with the mold. And I have, is it? I have my Dremel. And I have a grinding, oops, there it is. That's the grinding tip, and this, this is a blow wheel to keep the air off. So I'm just going to use this to cut away at the excess areas around here because I don't want a round shape showing up in my work. So I just trim that down. I can even sand it down so it feathers off. And that way it will completely disappear into the puddle that I pour. Now, I can't hold the phone and film at the same time. So you're going to have to trust me that this works and I'll show you when I'm done. All right, there's my dusty mess. And it's all cut there. So now I'm just going to feather that off. And... Uh, I'll show you what it looks like after that. But that's how you get that stuff off. Works pretty good. There they all are lined up in the sunshine covered in dust. And I'm going to use this grinding tip to sand them down. So now I'm going to be pouring some more of the Mayron Gold. This is like, isn't that gorgeous? Love it. 
I'm going to fill up these puddles that I've got for my center focus. I don't want them to be really thick though. So I'm spreading a amount of resin into these puddle areas and then I'm taking my popsicle stick and I'm thinning it out because what I have found is if I make these puddles in the center, just pour them in and fill it up, it's actually going to overflow the damned area that I created with that glitter glass and I do not want that at all. So I'm taking these points and I'm situating them down into these puddles. So just twist them back and forth and it sets them down into that resin and it's going to help to it adhere them to the surface. Now I've got some, this is a vase filler glass that I got from Michaels and I'm just sprinkling that on again very heavily. Well, I see seeing my little edges there and I want to make sure that the glass is going to stick there. So I'm tucking in a little bit more resin where I think I need it. And then I'll grab that glass again and just keep sprinkling, sprinkling it onto the wet resin in between the crystal points and just loading it up. Anything that's loose tomorrow after the resin cures, I'll be able to remove it. But that's how you get a really nice look and lots of bling going on in this one. So same thing for each of these areas. Just going to move that about, give it a quick torch to pop the bubbles, and then I set those points down into the puddle. Load it up with some more of that glass. Remember, I'm going to put all my products listed in the description box. So if you're wondering what it is I'm using, just check for that. Again, this is the glass, or this is the Mayron Gold going into the puddle. I've got the crystal points. These are uh, beads from Michaels. Setting those in there and then sprinkling on the vase filler that I also got from Michaels. And with the remainder of the gold resin, I started creating another focal line around the center of the geodes. And the next day I've decided that I'm going to be making another dam ring around the gold ring that I laid out yesterday. So again, I'm using the Pebeo CERN Relief. This is a transparent one. And again, these only take about an hour to an hour and a half. Remember, my studio is warmed up to 74 degrees, so they dry very quickly and rock hard. Now that I've let that Pebeo CERN Relief dry, I batched up six ounces of the Total Boat resin and I tinted it with black diamonds. This is their black diamond pigment and it's got a really interesting effect to it, but I'm doing these rings on the inside of the gold. And then what I want to do is I'm going to sprinkle some black little hexes of glitter right on top of that ring. I then come back with the black diamonds resin pigment and fill in that puddle area. So the idea is to put down the glitter on that outside ring and not have it float all the way in. So I again ring around that gold and then I fill in and when I use the torch it starts to make the resin flow more and it fills those puddles in very nicely. Now I did get a little bit of overflow on the black but you know I wanted to make sure I had good coverage and we'll figure it out when we get to that point. But this stuff is really spectacular. I love black diamond pigments. I know you've heard me talk about them before. What I'm going to do now is I have 91% alcohol in a spritz bottle and I'm just from a high distance doing some heavy spritzes onto those black puddles. And I'm going to show you just why I do that. Good morning everybody. I'm back downstairs in the studio and I wanted to see if I can get this on camera a little bit. If you look, you know the lights are a bugger, but I need the light. So if you look in the black here, you can see that little webbing going on. That's why I was spritzing 
the 91% alcohol on the resin because it gives that little effect, uh, almost like a little modeling. It's very hard to get on camera. I know you guys all know that trying to photograph a resin is, is hard, but look in this area here. Right? You see, the it looks like little moon craters in there. That's why I was spritzing on the alcohol so that I would get those effects. Because in black, you know, it's black. But this is black diamonds, and it has, you know, a, a little of a effect happening in there. You can see here, there's a little bit that I can catch on the camera. There's more when I look at it, you know with the naked eye, but it's hard to pick up on the camera, but it's there and it will all add to the piece. So here's another thing that happened. So I sprinkled on, let's see if I have them here on the table, I do. These are the black glitters that I used. They're from Michaels. Creatology, and I sprinkled them. You know, I did my black outline, kind of overflowed in some spots, but that's okay. We'll be doing more to it. But anyway, I sprinkled it. I did the one line, I sprinkled it on, and you know, it didn't sink in, which is exactly why I sprinkled it on top. I didn't want it to sink in, I want it to stay on top. But here, See those little gray dots? That's what happened with any of the, because I cleaned up the ones that, you know, kind of, they are sprinkling, so they're going all over the place. And some of them landed here on the white board. And when I, I'm figuring that what happened was when I used my torch, you know, to get the bubbles out of the resin, it probably warmed up those little uh, pieces of glitter that were on the tabletop as well. And it left that bugger. So, yeah, I, I've never had that happen before, but I don't know that I ever, you know, had, I don't know. I, I can't say I've ever had it happen before, but I can say, that I will uh, try to avoid it in the future. It's all going to get covered up by more work. So it's not the end of the world. But, you know, I like to give you guys information that you can remember for projects that you're working on. I always say, you know, my pain is your gain. And that's one of them. So, lots of little dots. But overall... I'm pretty happy with how things are moving along with this piece. Look at these babies. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, so more resin today, more sparkle today, and let's go. Okay, another six ounces of Total Boat resin and some more of the Mehron Gold. And today, I'm following a friend of mine. She puts hers into one of these squeeze bottles. Now this trick came from Deborah Strachan and she is in Canada. She also has a pigment uh, company up there. I believe it's called Resin Pigments of Canada. She's a doll. I'm gonna put a link to one of her videos here in for you guys to check out her channel. She's such a sweetheart. But she uses these squeeze bottles, and I have to tell you, it's a game changer. It was so easy to go around and create a nice thin line of gold around the gold that I already had down there. I also created a couple of small puddles and added some more of that vase filler glass on top just to create some more spots for bling and tuck those in there. And then I'm going to start... Uh, doing something to that ring of the gold, okay? Well, I forgot to turn on the camera. I started out by trying to add seed beads and they were sinking right down in and they looked 
awful. So I picked them out and I had these citrine chips. So I started working with those. They look really good. But then I started to run out. And thankfully, I have a Michael's store in my neighborhood, but they only had two strings and I needed four strings. So the hubs went for a drive to the other Michael's, which is a bit of a jog. So while I was working with the ones that I got at the local store, he was picking the others up. And, uh, whew, I got enough beads. So it's looking good. Yeah. And we have another new day and another new ring. I'm pouring out a ring of bright white. Again, this is from uh, the Epoxy Resin Store. It's their Flow Art Pigment White, and it is one of the brightest whites I've ever used. I'm also adding just a touch more of the gold. And again, another day and another ring of color. Today I'm actually tackling all the remaining white space on the board. So I'm filling it in with just a straight black. Again, this is the same black I used for that outside ring. This is the Flow Art Resin Pigment from the Epoxy Resin Store. And I tinted up really dark because I don't want to see anything shining through from that white background. I have a total of 12 ounces that I filled in this area with. But because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of detail work, teasing, this black into some of the smaller areas, I'm actually using a toothpick. That's how careful I am working to get these areas filled in. I don't want to fill it too much. I don't want it overflowing into the other areas. I had enough issue with that. So I'm just working very carefully, splitting it out. Again, two batches. Each batch is six ounces and that allowed me to have the time to really work on these details. So it was a great way of not having the resin get too hard on me. It allows me to have that 30 to 40 minute work time and I can really take my time teasing it into those little areas just like this. It's a lot of work. But let me tell you something, it's always worth it. I love seeing how these things transfer, transform and just, they are spectacular. These geodes are really a lot of fun to do. It's a lot of work, but it is worth it every minute of it. Beautiful, beautiful results. All right, I took my drop cloth dust cover off and here is these beautiful black, black as night puddles. You can see the reflection of my ugly ceiling. It turned out perfect. But I am not happy with the end result of the gold border. You can see the black that I did in the center kind of took over in there. And I'm going to just Take my time and I'm going to do one more ribbon of gold over top of that one because I really want that for definition around that black puddle. See how bad the gold is completely gone there. So I'm going to take my time and do that again. Now if you remember earlier in this video, I used a dollar store really soft plastic squeeze bottle and this, oh me is the squeeze bottle. So it's been sitting on my resin table here for several days and I kept playing around with it. Here's the cap. So the cap, you can see, I think you can see, you can still go right through it and there's the residue. It's all cured and rock hard. 
Um, I don't want to fiddle with that because, you know, I, I honestly, I don't care that it's not a very big opening. If anything, I kind of like that it's not a big opening. So I'm going to leave that. But this, I squeezed the heck out of it. You can see it's got, maybe you can see it there. You can see it's got like crumple marks all over it. I squeezed it and squeezed it. The resin was rock hard in there. But this is plastic, and it's a nice, smooth plastic. So I just kept squeezing and manipulating. I had a stick, and I was poking a stick in there. And look, it came out perfectly clean. So, yay, Deborah! I'm going to use this again, and I'm not going to worry about getting anything, you know, getting into my resin here. So, whoopee! That's fun. Let's go. Again, I've got the Total Boat resin, only two ounces that I batched up and poured into the bottle. And this bottle tip worked like a charm. I got a beautiful even line and put a little bit around those little sparkle spots too. Now here, I'm going to show you a really great tip. Some of the gold resin overflowed onto the white. So what I do is I soak an Q-tip in 91% alcohol, and then I just swipe up those spills. Now it's time to lay in the lines. This is a lot of fun to do. I don't have any plan for it. I do like to kind of follow the designs that are on there originally. So here I am with a nice, uh, this is a gold marker from Craftsmart. I get these at Michael's. This is a oil-based paint marker. And they must have redid their formula because the gold is much shinier than it was in previous purchases that I made with them. Here I am using the same type of marker, laying down some white, making that gold border stand out. And again, back with the gold. And I just kind of do as I feel like doing. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I just like to fill these spots in and keep that design carrying over. This goes on really smoothly. It has a type of tip that you need to um, take over onto a scrap piece of paper. I always keep scrap paper handy. And you depress the tip on the paper and that primes the tip with more paint. So if I start seeing spots where it's running a little bit thin, I just prime that tip on my scrap paper and then come back to where I left off. Now, somebody told me one time, they actually asked a question if I had an issue with any of my lines rubbing off. Now, because this is an oil-based pen, I had never had an issue with it rubbing off of the resin. But it also made me worry that if somebody were to need to clean these pieces off at another date, that maybe it's not such a good idea to have this pen area exposed and potentially wearing off of the art piece. So what I started doing was making sure that I apply these geode lines with the markers before I do my final clear coat. So that's what I'm doing today is I'm going about putting that geode lines in, creates a little bit more detail and it all adds to the effect before I do that clear coat. All right, today's the day. We're putting down the final clear coat over top of everything. I batched up a total of 42 ounces of the Total Boat resin, and it's quite a big batch, so I don't want to leave that kind of quantity in the big bucket for too long. I do want to make sure that I'm getting good coverage over these glass spots. Again, I want to make sure that everything is anchored in. So I just load up my stir stick here and drizzle it right on top of that glass. And that way it can flow and work down in amongst that vase filler glass and it really locks it down tight. I don't have to worry that it's gonna come loose on any of these boards. Work in all around those crystal points. You can see how it just flows right through that glass. Really nice. 
So let's get that all out of the bucket and onto the board. It's just flowing beautifully. Everything is going into the spots where I need it. And get that heat gun on there just to let it flow into the spots on its own. It's just going to keep on spreading, pop all the bubbles. I'm going to have a really close inspection, get down and eyeball it all. I want to make sure there's no dust or hair that settles in there. And then I take my glove hand and I work it over that edge to make sure I get it all shiny and clean. So there it goes. Let's put it to bed overnight. See you in the morning. Well, hello world and hello gold aura. You are gorgeous. This project took a lot of work, but it was worth every minute I spent. The resin from Total Boat was a pleasure to work with. I cannot stress how delightful I found it. The bubbles were not an issue. The surface is really just pristine and shiny as ever. If you want to see more from me, please click on the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you some new tips and tricks that you can apply to your projects. And I hope I made it so that you feel as if you can do your own project. Don't forget to look in the description box for all the products used and any discount codes that I can help you with. And we'll see you here next time on Mooncusser Art.